Hey everybody, David here, and I am back with another video for you all. Hopefully everybody is doing well. And in today's video, I am going to be talking about deload weeks with exercise or athletic performance. And basically all a deload is, if you've never heard of that term before, is you are reducing your volume or your intensity in a week of your program. Usually a program is four, five, maybe even six weeks, depending on the individual or the sport. And this is an important aspect for people that do not like to take full rest times off. I'm a person that likes to take full rest times for myself. I usually take about two weeks. When I was on a cross-country and track team in college, we took two weeks off. So that's what I usually do. But it can be very hard getting back into exercise. So I can understand why people would just prefer the deload week. And for some of my clients, depending on their goals, a deload week might be beneficial for them. So I include that deload week. And then we can start out with a new program, editing some stuff, sets, reps, exercises, all that type of jazz. And I'm a big proponent of having a deload week so people do not get injured, you do not overtrain yourself, and you are your workouts are staying consistent, and you're in a good mental state to continue with that program. Now, before we hop in to explain more about the deload week on this video, if you are looking for form and technique videos or any other programming type of needs for your fitness journey, after this video, make sure to go check out the rest of the videos on the channel to help you out with that. Now, with all that out of the way, we're going to hop into this deload week video. I have a little explanation of the deload week, so we're gonna hop into that right now. Deload week is a planned period of reduced intensity or volume in training, typically occurring every few weeks or after a period of intense training. So basically all that's saying is, if you got a program that's four to five weeks, maybe that fourth week we're gonna do a deload, that fifth week we'll do a deload. And this varies for people, you know, that's how long a program usually lasts, especially if you're like a weightlifter or if you're in any sports, but if you're in that postseason, that midseason, you know, an athlete, you want to have a deload week to be fresh for that competition because that's the main goal of your program is that competition part to succeed, to get those wins. So that deload week might be very beneficial. And then if you're just a general fitness enthusiast and you get very lazy, very uh, unmotivated if you take a lot of time off, the deload week will be very important for you to stay consistent and motivated. So taking this to decrease the risk of injury and overtraining is very important if you just don't want to do absolutely nothing you want to stay active it's good to include this deload week to keep you fresh to keep the exercises entertaining to you per se in your program its purpose is to allow the body to recover and adapt to previous workloads to help prevent overtraining and injuries while improving long-term performance so as the definition says here, we do the deload weeks to improve your overall long-term fitness instead of the short-term aspect. So if we need to take a time off because you're not feeling the best, then that is perfect. A deload week will work very well. Maybe instead of three sets, we're going to do two sets. Maybe instead of 10 reps, we'll do eight reps at the same weight per se. Just mess around, tweak it. Maybe less exercises in the program, no junk volume. So... After that, uh, during the deload week, for athletes, they might want to decrease the weight or reduce the number of sets and reps or lower the intensity of any workout such as weightlifting or cardiovascular exercise. This exact approach depends on the individual's training program, goals, and recovery needs. This is key to maintaining some level of activity to keep the body moving and engaging without causing excess stress. And I will say with the deload week, this is very important and this is the big challenge for programming a lot of exercise scientists or people in this type of field will say this is the most difficult part is to making sure you have your program on point especially if you're an athlete because i have known some people that have tried to have a big tournament per se and they are one day off of this deload week and it royally messes them up like for prime example the day before an event this guy was hitting in track and field. He was just doing some random practice and he was hitting crazy times, like insane amount of times on his races before that race. And the next day 
he missed, they misjudged the training program and he wasn't hitting nearly any of those times that he was hitting in the practice the day before, which is crazy. It's mind blowing, but that's, that's the important thing about programming and overall with athletic performance, that is a very important part of that. You got to be exact. And also too, with your general fitness people as well, which a lot of people on the channel are probably in this realm, having one day off might might mess you up for injury per se you might be feeling very burnt out and you miscalculated on your programming and you might get injured the next day because you were like oh, i need one more day of high intensity stuff to get the full benefit so that's a thing to keep in mind and that's why programming is so difficult and people go to school for this stuff because it could be very very small margins that you couldn't mess up from a pr to getting hurt or not even hitting that PR. So basically, and you know, uh, moral of this whole paragraph here, kind of what I mentioned before on the channel, we always want to take our goals into play when we talk about programming. It's always depending on your goals, on that individual, okay? The benefits of a deload week are recovery. It gives the muscle joints and central nervous system time to recover from stress and intense training. Adaptation is another benefit. It allows the body to adapt to become stronger after that recovery phase. Injury prevention reduces the risk of overuse injuries, giving the tissue time to heal. And mental refresh, so basically refreshing your mind, getting, you know, feeling good about exercise again, provides a mental break from intense training to help, help prevent burnout and maintain motivation and those are all very important things that we gotta look at when we're programming for ourselves or clients or athletic performance making sure that pe that person doesn't feel burnt out because if we're not motivated then we're not going to give it 100 percent and we could cause injury because we're just lacking on what we need to do during that practice or during that weightlifting session and injury prevention is also a very important thing a lot of people want to just keep that same intensity they think they're going to lose gains but at the end of the day, taking some time off, doing, reducing that volume, reducing that intensity might give you better gains in the long term than the short term. You know, a lot of us think in the short term, we need to be thinking in that long term for overall success in your program with a deload week. So I'm going to give you all a little example here. Basically, for a collegiate athlete like a goalkeeper Incorporating a deload week strategically into her training schedule might be crucial for that long-term performance and injury prevention. It is a way to balance intensity and proper recovery to get the best result possible. Kind of what I mentioned before, just a little summary on that. Now, coming into more of the programming side of things, frequency deload weeks are typically scheduled every four to six weeks, depending on the athlete's training volume, intensity, recovery, capacity, and overall goals. Some fitness enthusiasts or athletes might benefit from more frequent deloads if they have higher training loads and are prone to overtraining. That's something to think about when we're making our program. Listen to your body, listen to your athlete's body, listen to your own body when you're weightlifting, your client's body, whoever. You need to make sure that you are programming for that individual's needs. In intensity reduction during the deload week intensity is decreased this can cause or this can involve reduced weightlifting lowering the number of sets and reps or decreasing that intensity of that cardiovascular exercise for example instead of doing heavy squats at 90 percent of one rm the athlete or the fitness enthusiast might perform lighter squats at 60 to 70 percent intensity to keep them fresh to prevent that overtraining. Something to think about when we're programming that four to five week program. Maybe that last week should be a deload week going off these uh, percentages in this program. Volume reduction, along with intensity, the overall volume of training is also reduced during a, a deload week, which means the total number of sets, reps, or exercise performed. For instance, if an athlete usually does four sets, 10 reps for an exercise, they might do two sets, eight reps. Thinking about messing around with that set rep and volume is also very important. So kind of what the example mentions here, might be doing three sets of 10, but then we're gonna go two sets of eight. Little tweaks like that might vary, might help out a lot with your programming for other people or yourselves programming for your athletes per se. 
and then you want to focus on recovery. Emphasize the recovery modalities during that deload week, such as foam rolling, stretching, mobility work, and adequate sleep. This facilitates the body's recovery process and prepares it for upcoming training cycles. Now, I'm going to say with uh, sleep, if any of you watch my past videos, sleep and nutrition, those are, as of now, the best ways to recover and taking this focus on recovery seriously because that's important for those long-term games getting the right amount of sleep between seven to nine hours i will say depending on the individual and then making sure we're hitting our calorie intake carbs proteins and fats all very important aspects to recovering you know you think of people ice bath like the boots, the ones that blow up, I forget the names, the recovery boots, I guess you can call them. But, you know, there's not really much research out there to say, hey, those are better recovery modalities than eating and sleeping. Maintain movement patterns. So why reducing the intensity and volume? It's important to maintain your movement patterns and keep the body active. This could involve performing lighter variations of the exercise, practicing the skill at a lower intensity, or incorporating active recovery activities like swimming and yoga. Just a very important thing, keep the athlete moving, keep yourself moving. If you're a general fitness enthusiast, try to mimic some of those movements. So like if you're doing a squat and you don't want to do weighted squats anymore off your deload week, maybe do some banded squats. Put a band around the knees or do some Spanish squat. Put the band, tie it around the pole, do some squats that way. Body weight be very good to stay in shape and keep the body used to that movement pattern. And then individualization, tailor a deload week based on the athlete's specific needs, training history, recovery capacity, and upcoming goals. Not every athlete will respond the same way, so we got to play around with that deload. Maybe they need two weeks in that program, maybe they need one week, and maybe you need to play around with just the intensity, not the volume, or vice versa. It's something you need to look into for yourself and your programming, and or if you're programming for anybody else. Now, by programming a well-designed deload week into an athlete's training program, you can optimize their recovery, prevent overtraining, and set the stage for continued progress over the long term, not the short term. Now, remember, we always want to, when we're looking at a program, we're always looking at the long-term results. We're not looking at the short-term because those short-term goals will lead us into those long-term goals, okay? And especially when we are trying to lose weight or we're trying to compete in a sports season, these are all important aspects to look at and timing that deload right can be the benefit of hitting that PR or not or getting injured or not. We just need to make sure that we are closely paying attention to when we program these deload weeks and when we need these deload weeks and if you need these deload weeks. All very important aspects of programming and I would not shy away from trying to deload week out yourself on your own program and see how you feel about it. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about rest and recovery. I'll be very interested to hear. And if you already use a deload week, let me know what you do. Do you mess with the intensity? Do you mess with the sets, the volume, any of that type of jazz? I'll be very curious to hear. Don't be afraid to put in the comments. Now, with all that out of the way, I will see you all on the next video.